Is this true? Yeah. I don't know, I found two little baby boas. Epic. And you just thought, I'll bring these for, for dinner or? It really blew my mind. Career highlights and more with your favorite winter athletes. This is On The Line. Mr. Travis Rice, how you doing, sir? I'm well, uh, I'm well out in Jackson. Uh, some wild weather we've been having, but uh, yeah, it's been a great day for extended home stays. How have you been keeping busy in these uh, interesting times? Maybe this goes for a lot of people. I've, I feel like I've been busier than I've ever been. You know, we've been salvaging a bunch of projects and here in Jackson, we've been building a shred venue unlike the world has ever seen. And uh, that is definitely a built by hand venue. So it's, it's taken quite a lot of a lot of manpower. Gonna build a bridge ramp out. I was checking out the landing. It looks like uh, you could go like 100 feet on this thing. Stairway to heaven. So I'm calling this one. <laughs> Deep takeoff. I am humbled, honored, and really excited to announce the natural selection is back. It will officially become a three-stop tour. This is gonna be good. I don't think there's any shortage of action anywhere on this course. <laughs> Come on over, Jackson Hole, February 3rd, man. Natural selection is going off. You know, you had to cut the season short, so it's been fun to be home for that long? Yeah, it's been really nice. I mean, you turn on the media, right, and it's like everything's just falling and crumbling around us. But, you know, I think the real story, probably more overwhelming positivity and silver linings that's come out of a lot of this is it's, you know, it's been like a global... A global slowdown, global check, or at least staying in one place. I see you've been out doing some uh, Klettersteig or some uh, Via Ferrata. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a <clears throat> there's a lot to do here in Jackson. I've been on the lake a lot this summer, been on the mountains, on the bike, and like I do a, a lot of uh, gear design with the sponsors I work with, and snowboards and tinkering with how to improve bindings and <clears throat> how to make boots more comfortable, widen those toe box. So uh, frankly, it's been great for for putting projects that are gonna come out in the next two years. Do you ever just sit down and chill or are you constantly busy? Every morning, there's there's time in there for chill. One specific moment in your career that you would highlight, just one, unfortunately, what would that be for you, Travis? Interesting. Um, I would probably have to root it back to, for me, what kind of helped start it. I was uh, down at Snowboarder, Snowboarder Super Park in Mammoth Lakes, probably when I was like 19 years old. Um, you know, I'd been riding, actually graduated high school uh, semester early, so I had spring to, to ride before I was headed to university that didn't fall. And I didn't have an invite, but uh, a couple friends of mine, Brian Aguchi from Rich Goodwin, convinced me to like, hey, we got this. Like, we'll just barge it. It's going to be a bunch of people there. We'll just barge it. So <laughs> I hopped in the car with him, went down to Mammoth Lakes and ended up doing the super park as, um, as kind of a, you know, a rookie. Ended up, uh, yeah, having a great week riding with so many people I looked up to and got uh, like a VIP of super park award. And, you know, in a weird way that that kind of um, a lot of dominoes fell uh, after that because of it. I mean, there was, of course, like contests and and films and moments in the backcountry, but you know, I think that was a that was a foundational moment for me. Was that was that the super part of the year of the hundred and seventeen foot back rodeo? Yeah. So essentially, you gate crashed your way into super part and and yeah. won the the MVP of the of the week. Yeah, which then you know uh, Justin Hosnick with Absinthe Films was there, and uh, this buddy of mine from here convinced him to allow him to burn some sixteen mil film on me, which sixteen mil film ain't cheap. And he's like, okay, okay, during the week. So we had actually shot a few things. And, you know, after that was over, he offered me the ability to, he's like, hey, look, I'll be willing to, you know, flip the bill for Rich's time and film if you guys want to try to go, you know, Hail Mary it up in Alaska. I mean, we're talking, this was the month of May into June. Was that your first time to Alaska? Oh, yeah. And so we went straight up, had these two old beater, beater rental sleds, like out snowmobiling out into the backcountry of Alaska, <laughs> like... Uh, you know, didn't really know where or what we were doing, um, and then ended up putting together a, a yeah opening film part of the next next year. And that was transcendence, right? Which helped me convince uh, my parents, like, hey, take a gap year, take one year. 
then mother, I swear to you, I am going back to university the next year. So I'm gonna test your general knowledge about snowboarding. Should you answer enough questions correctly, you can end the interview however you want. If, however, you fall under Lee, we're gonna ask you to finish this interview with a dare. Who landed the first ever backside triple cork 1440? Uh, it's probably not right, but I'm gonna go with Mark. Yeah, Mark is correct, first one on film. Very good. What is a hack and flip? Technically, in the half pipe is where it's derived from, and I believe that it's really just a front side 540 rodeo, although because it's a half pipe, it's more like a, more like a seven. Oh, that one's wrong. Oh wait, no, it's switch. Oh, it's oh, switch. Start again. It, it's a cab, it's a cab trick. Who stomped the first ever backside 10 double rodeo in competition? It was, it was, it was either Torstein or Arrow. No, it wouldn't have been him. I don't think it was me. It was, I don't know. I'm going to have to go with, um, damn it, Torsten. It was, in fact, you, according to Wikipedia, Travis. <laughs> in 1996, a snowboarder landed the cover of every single publication with a backside air. What is the name of this snowboarder? Probably Ingmar, who had the most famous backside air heard around the world. Yeah, that's it. Which rider invented the backside rodeo? So I'm going to go against where you're taking this and I'm gonna go with uh, Brody Dowell. Peter Line got a lot of credit for like he was doing backside rodeos really well very stylishly early on. I don't know what do you got who, who who's the name? According to the, the folklore that I've understood is that Peter Line was the one who made it famous but Chris Engelsman yeah. was the one who actually did it first. Yeah it okay first. that that sounds right. To add to that I think uh, I think it was uh, Brody Dowell. You've, you've absolutely smashed that out of the park and I'd say you probably have avoided the uh, the dare at the end unless you want to do it, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We're gonna get a little bit weird now. We're gonna go into a little section called Would You Rather Give Up Internet Connection for One Year or Not Shower for One Year? I probably wouldn't shower. The body is actually pretty well at self-shedding. I hope you like dreads. 30 butterflies magically appear every time you sneeze or every time you cough, an angry monkey appears and causes havoc? Probably the cough. Majority of my season is out in really savage cold conditions, so it would be momentarily pretty, but those things would just freeze in midair and it'd actually kind of be sad. I'd just kill 30 butterflies. Only ride sunny slush on a snowboard for the rest of your life, or you can ride the deepest powder on the planet, but only on skis. But I, but I could have like deep pow all the time? Deep pow all the time, but you could only ski. Um, frankly, I'd probably go with the skis because, dude, in the winter, like, that's when it's magic. Ride a mediocre season, so not terrible, not great, but no Alaska on the cards, or you get two perfect weeks in Alaska. Two perfect weeks. Because, I mean, two perfect weeks in Alaska is, you know, once every five to seven years anyway, so... So you either have to Top Gun high five every single person you meet for the rest of your life forever, or you have to wedgie anyone you see in a green shirt. I mean, I'll go top, top Gun all day. Top Gun all day. <laughs> when you come around for the bottom one and they don't have a handout, you know, there's some like hand to cheek. Yeah. You know, I could see that being uh, problematic. We're going to move into a section which is called Truths. What does absinthe really mean? I actually don't really know the obvious answer to this, but I'm going to go on a whim and say something that is uh, truthful something with integrity. What is your favorite accent? Whoever I'm hanging out with, I, I can't help but adopt it. I heard a story about, you, you went down to Costa Rica, apparently you were staying in a cabin up on the hill and managed to make it down to another cabin in a torrential downpour and you came carrying two boa constrictors. Is this true? Yeah, and I found two little baby boas. Epic. And you just thought, I'll bring these for, for dinner or? No, no. No, for, not to eat, for, not to uh, eat, but you sort of, you brought them down and said, hey guys, look what I found. Look for what appreciation, I found. yeah, man. I mean, it's one of the finest art pieces Mother Nature has. The boa <laughs> constrictor, that thing's incredible. You want to do a dare? No. But let's, let's do a dare. Oh, I think that's your color, mate. I know, right? An artist's impression of a nice backcountry jump with a couple of trees around. Okay. This might get a little, a little tough here. Okay, we good? We got that one done? <laughs> okay. <laughs> interesting, interesting formation there, definitely. Thank you very much for joining us. You seem like a very busy man, so we're going to let you uh, de-blindfold and get about your day.
Thank you very much.